Hi. Before I get cerebral, I just want to say thank you from my heart for your focus, for your passion, for overcoming the indifference. And what I'm hoping you can see is um, I'm, I'm CEO of a company called Green Harvest Technologies, and our focus is bioplastics. And I'm standing here really on the shoulders of many great people. Um, I'm not alone. There's many people that have been working on this area for several decades, um, people around the world, actually. And so what I want to do is walk through and tell you about the vision, the strategy that we have for how bioplastics can be integrated in and uh, deal, address the problem at the source and stop the flow of toxic plastics into the ecosystem. Now, I say the flow because we want to deal with the flow of the raw materials all the way through the product and then on to the waste cycle. So we're dealing with this systemically. So let's jump into it. I think it's important to step back and think of the paradigm that exists. Over the last 60 years, plastic products have climbed a growth curve. And it's just been tremendous, increasing functionality, use, and durability. Uh, material science has been at its peak, uh, getting, building products that are just amazing, actually. When you think of it can stop a bullet from going into a person, it can uh, get space shuttles into the air, it can be your bumper on your car and save your life. Um, but what was missed, and I think what we've heard so far today is a number of the things that have been missed and I want to address. Um, first, sustainability. The industry dealing with conventional plastics as they exist today haven't looked at uh, plastics from beginning raw material all the way through the end of life and considered the impact through. The environment products are made focused on how they will survive in the environment they're intended to use, not their impact on the environment. Um, Eco-friendly, uh, operations, the manufacturing, that's been touched on, uh, the dangers, the hazards, and really the environmental impact of uh, manufacturing. Healthy, um, spent a lot of time so far today talking about the fact that chemicals used in plastics would not be used in foods or medicines. Um, and yet somehow they're allowed to be in packaging and in products, and for what reason they you know, they move into the body and further into the system. And then end of life, um, products are not designed and produced and then put into consumers' hands with a strategy for end of life. So how does this apply? What I want to do is um, talk about the new way, uh, the, the next leg in the story. Bioplastics will climb the same curve of use as petroleum plastics did but much faster. They're on a much faster track because they're learning from the history of plastics. And they're in the hands of the industry that used plastics to get us to where we're at today. So there's accelerated change. Will this time be any better? Sustainability. There can be a significant difference in sustainability, but the, paradigm, the old paradigm just won't work. There can be, we can design product for use to survive the environments they're used in, but we can also design products to not impact the environment the way we're seeing the impact. But the old paradigm won't work. Eco-friendly operations, we can practice state-of-the-art manufacturing, development, use of green chemicals. The old paradigm won't work. End of life, we can design product from the very concept, the or origin of the concept, for its end of life purpose, how it will be handled at the end of life. And that's, that's what I want to talk about, is how we do that. So a big part of this is taking responsibility. And I believe it's personal responsibility, it's community responsibility, it's industry responsibility. And what I want to do is zero in on the strategic hurdles that I see we have to tackle to bring the fruits of bioplastics into the marketplace to be able to make a difference on this source of toxic plastics. Um, first strategic priority is sustainability, and you'll see in the background those nurdles that were referred to earlier. Um, when you look at them, you can't see the difference between a petroleum polymer and a biopolymer. Um, and what we need to do is make sure that the raw materials for biopolymers are non-toxic and eco-friendly and derived from sustainable farming practices. And what we've done is working together with a group called the Institute for Agricultural Trade Policy is uh, looked at how do we 
eliminate um, genetic modified organisms in seed that go into the ground? How do we eliminate carcinogens uh, from the farming practices? How do we manage energy use, manage greenhouse gases, manage the rotation of crops? So that what we did is put together a program called the Working Landscape Certificates, which allows product owners who want to use bioplastics in their product or in their packaging to take a step back and look at the raw materials that are used and make arrangements with farmers so that farm produce is actually certified according to these practices as they go into the resin manufacturing for the bioplastic. Um, it's well received. Um, second major hurdle, the other end of the story is the end of life. And this is uh, a part of things that are in their infancy. New material recycling is at its infancy. Um, the technology exists, and I can say that industrial composting is in use today. Uh, some unique practices with that are um, there's, there's some machines in use today, U.S. Congress, uh, various uh, universities, that where they use bioplastics for the single-use single, single use disposable, disposable items, and the end of the day, the end of the week, they process it through these machines that do the composting on site and then move the waste out to, to the landscaping. Um, so there are machines that do that. The recycling is also there. It's in its infancy like the industrial composting, but the recycling, there's examples of it in use today, and it can grow very dramatically, I believe. But one example is in Europe, there's a company that, uh, that provides bioplastic um, single-use disposable items for uh, beer fests, for fairs, for all these outdoor events, and then they collect them all at the end of the event bring them back to their factory, and take them back to a lower base material that can then be re-fermented into those same products again and put them out for the next event. Um, these, these processes are in place, and they can be expanded. But one of the key things to make it successful is you've got to build a critical mass of the material so that you can get it into the stream. And the stream, really, I believe in is the better stream is the recycling stream. Uh, because that then brings multiple generations to the use of that material, going back to reducing the need for agricultural products and, um, and really in the recycling, going back to the raw material, um, you can actually bring back the same quality of product that you, uh, you, you recycle down. So a bottle can come back as a bottle, still transparent. Um, but the captive environments need to be um, stadiums, hospitals, schools, uh, institutions. And what I look at is, as, as we get a critical mass of these types of organizations working the same process, you're beginning to build an infrastructure. So if a city brings the hospitals together, the schools together, um, the government buildings together, you're creating a process where an infrastructure and a focus is happening within that community. And now you have uh, the basis to begin to move it to the household so that the household can participate. Strategic hurdle number three is prioritizing products for health and, and environment. And we believe we've got to take on the hard stuff because industry is not taking the hard stuff quick enough and have real impact with products. Um, so a key part of this is R&D, going back to gotta, products have to perform, which is what the current industry is focused on, but it has to be made to perform in an eco-friendly way. Uh, got to have heat stability, flexibility, durability, shelf life, vapor barrier. You can't, ha you can't go to drink your soda and have all the fizz gone. You can't go to put the cap back on your prescription medicine bottle and the childproof lock doesn't kick in, instead the thing crumbles. Um, you have to have performance in product, but that performance needs to be considered what's the performance of the raw materials, what's the performance of the product, what's the performance at the end of life. So, Part of what needs to happen is go back to the storyboard for any product. Every product in its development needs a storyboard. What are the elements? In this case, I have a reusable, durable water bottle made from a bioplastic, a storyboard around it, where um, you got to consider the inputs and the outputs. And the inputs need strategic thinking around what are the raw materials being used, in this case, renewable materials, where are they coming from, what are the qualities they bring with them, and what do they add to the product in terms of qualities and design characteristics. And then the product needs to perform, and then at the end of life, where do those parts go? And that's the way that we're approaching product design. That's the strategy I believe that all products need to have. And when I talk about we need to be thinking about sustainable materials, we need to be thinking about end of life, thinking about products, we need to think about where we can have the highest impact on health and um, 
healthcare, essentially. So our focus is on doing scalable products in healthcare and home care for early life, where we're dealing with products, and you can see on the list, uh, products in maternity, birthing, neonatal, nursery, and pediatric, bringing renewable materials, particularly bioplastics, into those products. Um, and we find extreme interest on the part of healthcare communities. Um, this is something that is pervasive, healthcare is pervasive. It's in every community, it's around the world. Uh, there's huge opportunity to get impact. The professionals in healthcare also have standards and their certification, so we can make sure that we're getting product to perform to those standards with transparency about what's exactly in those materials. Um, the fourth one is, is, is really a challenging one, but it's one we're taking as part of the hard work that needs to be done. <laughs> talked about the raw materials, talked about end of life, talked about the products. This is what goes in between all of those. This is the manufacturing. So, Plastic product owners do not want to invest in R&D or retooling of their manufacturing facility. They want to see, prove it first. They want to see it's going to be economical. Um, bioplastics do not just drop into the machines that make product today and then get processed through. Those machines need retooling. They need uh, purging and then purging back to put petroleum products back through. So it's a huge investment on the part of brand owners. They need to be told either you have to do it um, or somebody else has done it and now you can do it. We want to start the engine on this and prove that it can be done so that product owners naturally move in that direction. So what does this mean? It means that we're creating the trade route. So what we want to do is create the trade route from raw material all the way through product and then end of life so that we can show brand owners that this can be done. Bioplastics can work in this way. And, uh, Manufacturing operations, as well as R&D, need to be fully automated, certified, eco-friendly. All the qualifications need to be there. And it requires a comprehensive supply chain in this. Now, that, ha that brings together a few different things. One, bioplastic resins are in development around the world. Um, and there's huge beneficial qualities coming from those resins. And they will be able to replace, within the next five or six years, most of the types of plastics that go into products today. So it's a matter of tapping into those, having a supply of those, and being able to apply them, match them with products so that you get performance in products. And um, the other part of the global supply chain is that everything doesn't need to be owned here. It, um, there's interest in this, the global interest. This is about humanity. So it's not about one brand owning this. It's not about one country owning this or one location. It's about enabling the world to do this. So helping the resins come together and ship the resins where manufacturing can happen within a region. And then uh, products can be made available within a region and then recycling can happen within the region, going back to making the product again. So we help regions uh, get away from having to produce and ship around the world and use something from somewhere else. Um, so to begin to summarize, what I'm talking about here is from raw materials, sustainable raw materials, through um, product R&D, through comprehensive supply chain, manufacturing, and end of life. We need a product trade route, one to prove that these materials will work. Um, and to demonstrate with product in people's hands, this works, you can use it in your brand, whatever. Um, secondly, we need to build the critical mass. And th that starts with captive environments. Healthcare, in my mind, is a perfect one. Uh, because it deals with the toxicity issue. And you can spread healthcare across all life stages um, and deal with the schools, the stadiums, et cetera. And I believe we simply can't wait. This is something that we need to push forward in order to stop this flow of plastics. Uh, instead, move over. To me, um, the, the professionals I know in this area have been dealing with this as an alternative to petroleum plastics. I think it's about starting a whole new industry. So it's a whole new industry focused on this whole value chain of raw material all the way through end of life and getting products in the hands of people. So the vision is about getting in front and leading industry, manufacturing products, getting them in consumers' hands, fuel the demand, recycle, and establish a cradle-to-cradle superhighway. Make it available to other brands, other people. And that's what it's about. We're green harvest technologies. <laughs>